Okay, now we're going to look at the placement page. So this comes after the IEP. Open this document. So again, double check your dates. It doesn't make really a lot of sense for the placement page to be happening after the IEP. Um, so I'm going to switch that to line up. We're going to have the student either present or consulted. The parent will be there. On this page, we need to have three main roles. I'm going to add Trevor, who's one of our learning specialists. We need to have the person knowledgeable about these three, about evaluation data, placement options, and the child. So in this case, I will have that I'm knowledgeable about placement. Erica is knowledgeable about evaluation data, and Trevor's knowledgeable about the child. So for P is for placement, we need our three persons knowledgeable. Um, Right? And we have other titles, but these are the roles, these are like the hats that we're wearing when we talk about placement. So I could write in the full titles of everyone here. And then we can add other participants, and don't forget to say that these people were here, or they will not show up. I'm going to save that. And now we go to our placement decisions. And we've already talked about how we want to have at least two options and that we want to always start with the least restrictive environment, which is going to be 80% or more of the day in regular class and 40 to 79. We're going to save our options and go into show detail. We do not select this before the meeting. We're going to come with a blank draft because we're not predetermining placement. We're going to talk about the options as a team and decide what is better, and then you'll come back to um, finalize what the team decided. So we won't, we won't do anything up here just yet. We are going to describe the placement, so sometimes we might even have two of the same placement bands. I'm going to hide detail and add another placement band. It's kind of weird, both are 80%, but one might be push in, one could be pull out, one could be just a consult model. So maybe we do actually have two of the same um, placement bands, but we describe them differently. So this could be a uh, push in support. We need to have at least one benefit and one harm. We do have a drop down. You can just write in it, but I encourage you to use our drop down options. And you can think about uh, for your benefit and harm, it can help to think what's the opposite. So if this is our most, our, our, if this is our least restrictive placement, this is going to be maximum integration with classroom peers. That's a great option there. Possible harmful effects, well, it might not give them enough structure and behavioral support. For this, uh, kind of what else was considered to, for the student to access the least restrictive option? We've got some options here, like if we did have a student on a modified diploma, most of the time you're just going to select this top one, accommodations and modifications to continue, to, according to the IEP. That's going to cover you in most of your cases, and you'll save it. We're going to go to the second 80% option. And this would be um, general education with one resource. Um, and this student struggles in math, so I'm going to be really specific there. The benefit is that they are going to receive some more small group instruction. The student's not going to be included in all gen ed classroom activities, and again, we have everything that is in the IEP. And then our last option was this more restrictive option. And you might only have two, but if you actually are considering this level for the student, this could be um, 
either two resource classes or um, a blend of SLC and resource level of support throughout the day. The benefits, this is going to be more intensive individualized instruction. This is going to be limited social interaction, typically developing peers. My phone is ringing, you can ignore that. And we'll save that. So our placement page is actually ready to go. We'll click print preview. So this is what you will prepare before the meeting. You might get in the meeting and need to add more placement options, um, but a lot of times you'll have a pretty good idea of what the team is going to be talking about. So it's coming without anything selected. And we talk it through, and then during the meeting, we are going to put an, a check mark or an X on the one we actually selected, and then we will reject the other options. And when that's done, we'll upload it into Synergy, we'll come back to this document. Let's say that we selected the most restrictive placement. We will select it. The start date is always going to be the day after the IEP, the school day after the IEP. So I said this was Friday. It would actually be starting Monday. We've got only two options. Does it meet or not meet? So this one best meets the student's need at this time, and you'll save it. We rejected the other two. So we will go into them and just reject. There's no start date. And does not meet the student's needs. Save. It's thinking, and now there we go. And we'll reject this one. We'll save it. This is the first document because we're not ready yet on the IEP, but I'm going to show you the validate option. So there are some rules built into documents, and we can do a little validation check beforehand, which is what we're doing now. Do we have everyone? So in this case, we have a little warning that, hey, the document is the 25th, but normally it starts the next day. Well, it was over a weekend, so I could have selected Saturday. You can ignore the warning if it's reasonable. Otherwise, maybe it's going to help you out. Oh, yeah, I, I accidentally put it for next month, and then you can go back and check. But otherwise, that was the only validation error. You're kind of in the own validation check screen, so you close it. I've got to undo any changes, and you can close it. Okay. And then when you are ready to finalize, you would click Finalize. Um, and we'll get into that kind of at a, at a later time.